Good afternoon and welcome to the opening ceremony of Southeast Asia Lecture Hall, where we bring 21st century excellence by delivering lectures from world-class scholars. My name is Asher and I'll be your MC and moderator for the day. Ladies and gentlemen, the Southeast Asia Lecture Hall is a free, independent, people-to-people -people program that aims to provide free and regular access to Southeast Asian students, high quality lectures from world-class scholars from various fields of study. We believe that this is the first ever initiative of its kind to be implemented in the region, which aims to help promote educational emancipation, since both universities in Southeast Asia are having difficulty still in getting access to world's top lecturers. To be able to do this, Foreign Policy Community of Indonesia has partnered with various institutions and universities across Southeast Asia. We would like to thank our partners from across the region, Venus University, Chiang Mai University, Diplomatic Academy of Vietnam, Far Eastern University, Institute of Business Timor Leste, International Islamic University of Malaysia, LFDR Communication and Business Institute, Mahidol University, National University of Philippines, National University of Singapore, Paragon International University, President University, Kabanaka University, Singapore University of Social Sciences, Tamasat University Faculty of Political Science, Universitas Erlanda, Universitas Bosoa, Universitas Budi Luhur, Universitas Gajah Mada, Universitas Hasanuddin, Universitas General Ahmad Yani, University Kebangsaan Malaysia, Universitas Kristen Satya Wacana, Universitas Andalas, Universitas Slamet Riyadi, University of Nottingham, Malaysia, University of Mandalay, Universitas Samratulangi, Universitas 17 Agustus 1945, Jakarta, Vietnam Academy of Social Sciences, Yale and U.S. College, and Yangon University of Economics. Thank you once again to all of our university partners. Now, please enjoy a video introducing the Southeast Asia Lecture Hall program that we have prepared for you. Amazing. Now, it is my honor to introduce our speakers, distinguished and esteemed guests uh, for the ceremony. We have Dato Lim Jokhoi, the Secretary General of ASEAN or the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. Dato Lim, thank you for being here. We will also be joined later for a fireside chat with Minister Nadi Makarim, the Minister of Education, Culture, Research and Technology of Republic of Indonesia. Last, but certainly not least, I'd like to introduce Dr. Dino Patidawa, the founder and chairman of Foreign Policy Community of Indonesia. Dr. Dino is also the initiator of the Southeast Asia Lecture Hall. Pleasure to have you here, sir. I want to give a big and warm welcome as well to all of our student representatives that are joining us live from the 11 Southeast Asian countries across the region. Thank you so much for being here. We are so happy and pleased to have you with us. 
Great. Hello, everyone. It is now time for us to hear from our speakers. And without further ado, I'd like to pass over the mic to Dr. Dino to deliver his remarks. Thank you very much, Esther. And I want to send my uh, deepest uh, appreciation and greetings to Secretary General of ASEAN, Dr. Uh, Lim Jokhoi. Uh, thank you for joining us. I know you're very busy uh, with uh, ASEAN matters, so it's a great honor for us uh, to have you here. And also, uh, thank you to Minister for Education, Nadi Karim, and I look forward to hearing your thoughts today. This is a big day for, for us uh, because uh, we are launching a new process, uh, an academic forum for Southeast Asia. I say Southeast Asia and not just ASEAN because uh, we also include uh, Timor-Leste uh, in this, so 11 countries in Southeast Asia. And uh, I should probably let you know how this idea came about. Uh, I'm also uh, the chairman of Indonesian uh, Lecturers Association, and we have about 20,000 universities uh, in Indonesia. And uh, out of those uh, universities, uh, and whenever I travel to different universities, I notice one common uh, complaint or concern uh, that is uh, the unequal access and unequal quality of uh, education system. Meaning if in Jakarta, I go to say University of Indonesia, for example, or University of Gajah Mada, uh, they have really uh, good lectures there, right? But uh, the more I travel farther uh, out, right? And uh, look at universities there, uh, the more the likelihood that they're not going to get access to quality lectures, right? Uh, so, uh, and that seems to be a problem, not just for Indonesia, but also for Southeast Asia in general, right? unequal access to uh, uh, quality uh, uh, lecture uh, and, and, uh, and unequal access. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, this was a problem that uh, we spotted and we thought, okay, what can be done about this, right? And uh, this is when we came up with the idea of uh, having a Southeast Asia uh, lecture hall. Uh, the idea being, uh, let's have a virtual forum uh, that uh, meets every three weeks. And uh, every three weeks, the students would uh, be able to listen to lectures from top scholars from around the world, from Southeast Asia and beyond. And the lectures would be free and the students would be uh, receiving uh, e-certificates uh, for uh, joining, right? So that was the idea. Uh, and we began to explore this idea to sign out this idea to different campuses. And surprisingly, we uh, found a number a great interest from the campuses that we spoke with. Uh, they also recognized that uh, this was a challenge uh, for them, right? Because, you know, if you want to hear good lectures, uh, sometimes you have to go to a top university. And to go to a top university is first uh, very competitive uh, and sometimes very costly which means what? Uh, not many people are able to listen to uh, good lectures, right? So in this way, the formula of Southeast Asian Lecture Hall, we give emancipation uh, to everybody, uh, as long as they have an internet, uh, a telephone, uh, to connect virtually to the lectures, then you're all set, right? Um, so uh, uh, we found what the answer to the problem, uh, and uh, we were able to get uh, the support of uh, uh, friends from around the region, campuses, uh, students, uh, lecturers, uh, and um, I'm very pleased that uh, the ASEAN Secretary General, Dr. Lim Jokhoi, is also supportive uh, of this program. Right? So uh, it's a big day for us, and uh, our vision is quite simple. Uh, our vision is uh, to see to it that the Southeast Asia Lecture Hall becomes 
a lecture hall of choice for Southeast Asian students and lecturers, uh, something that they look forward to every three weeks uh, or so. Yeah, uh, And we also uh, want the Southeast Asia lecture hall to be a permanent fixture fixture of Southeast Asia's educational community, educational system, uh, and not just a permanent fixture, but something that grows, uh, grows fast uh, and, and promisingly. Uh, I'm pleased to say that, for example, uh, we've uh, gotten, uh, I think, around 50 campuses from Southeast Asia, uh, and this is something that's going to grow, hopefully to 100, hopefully to 200, 500, even 1,000 universities in Southeast uh, Asia. So a permanent fixture that continues to grow uh, within the Southeast Asia educational community uh, system. Uh, we also want this to be a platform that can advance uh, educational emancipation uh, so that uh, no matter where you are, how far you are, how remote you are, uh, you are still able uh, with the aid of the internet, uh, which is hopefully will be there, uh, we'll be able to hear uh, good lectures without even paying for it. Uh, and this, I hope, would uh, be able to spark uh, a greater excellence, sense of excellence, quality of excellence among the Southeast Asian students and lecturers. And finally, uh, uh, our vision is uh, for this program to facilitate a uh, community uh, a Southeast Asian and ASEAN uh, community of uh, academics. Yeah? Uh, because from this program, you can connect not just to the lecturers, but you can connect with each other who are listening to the lectures. And hopefully this will facilitate more introductions, uh, more connections, um, and maybe even more collaboration. But certainly a feeling that, hey, you know, uh, we are all Southeast Asian students. Uh, and as uh, Dr. Lim Jokoy would say, of course, ASEAN identity is really key uh, part of how ASEAN will grow uh, in the future. So we hope that the Southeast Asian Lecture Hall will help foster uh, this sense of uh, Southeast Asian or ASEAN uh, community of uh, uh, academics yeah. uh, and if that can be achieved uh, uh, you know that's going to be a good thing for uh, ASEAN so once again I really thank all of you for uh, joining uh, our launch of Southeast Asia Lecture Hall and again special thanks to Secretary General of ASEAN Dr. Lim Jokhoi uh, I've been to his office uh, at the ASEAN Secretariat, and he's always uh, very warm whenever he receives me. Uh, so I want to thank you for your uh, friendship and cooperation, as always. And for those of you who uh, know of uh, friends or universities that want to join this program, uh, please uh, let us know, and we'll be happy to extend uh, this program to anyone who wishes to, to join, because again, the key is emancipation uh, and equality of access to all Southeast Asians to uh, good or even great lectures. Yeah. I'll stop there again. Thank you very much. And uh, let's enjoy the rest of the session. Thank you, Dr. Dina, for sharing um, the behind the scenes story behind how this program was initiated, which is to promote educational emancipation. Uh, now I'd like to invite Dr. Lim Jokhoi, the Secretary General of ASEAN, to deliver his speech. Mr. Secretary General, over to you. Um, I know His Excellency Nadim Karim will be on stage later on. I would like to acknowledge him as Minister of Education, Culture, Research and Technology of Indonesia. Of course, Dr. Dino Jalal, founder and chairman of Foreign Policy Community of Indonesia. I think I have a very good conversation with him and we uh, very much uh, uh, appreciate and uh, what you have done uh, today. And this is part and parcel of the uh, complement the work and the program of ASEAN University Network, which I attended couple of weeks ago and I hope that our, our university network will 
uh, utilize this platform to reach out, uh, especially to those uh, key speakers uh, that uh, uh, Dr. Dino mentioned difficult to access if you don't have uh, um, uh, means to do it. Now we have uh, 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 we have the uh, technology. I think it's good for us to work together. Distinguished representative of Southeast Asian universities, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon. Uh, Selamat uh, siang. First of all, I would like to congratulate foreign policy community of Indonesia on the launch of the Southeast Asia Lecture Hall programs. And uh, I would like to thank also Dr. Dino for inviting me to deliver these remarks. It is a pleasure to connect with all of you this afternoon. The series of virtual lecture that will take place under this program is quite timely. I see it, it as a valuable platform that will connect our youth with global thought leaders on topics and development that are critical importance to a region, especially when ASEAN and the world are navigating a major geopolitical shift, demographic changes, and of course, the COVID-19 crisis. COVID-19 in particular has produced challenges that demands a holistic strategy that addresses both the health and social economic impacts. The crisis also underscores the importance of collective efforts in working towards a resilient, inclusive and sustainable recovery. ASEAN's response to this crisis has been comprehensive. Member states established COVID-19 Response Fund, finalized the strategic framework for public health emergency and adopted the Declaration of ASEAN Trouble Corridor Arrangement Framework. Moreover, in formalizing ASEAN's commitment to work together on COVID-19 recovery efforts, the leaders adopted the ASEAN Comprehensive Recovery Framework and its implementation plan. This framework served as a consolidated strategy for ASEAN to emerge stronger and more resilient from COVID-19 crisis, given due consideration to the hardest hit, hardest hit sectors and vulnerable groups. The framework not only looks to enhance our health system, but is also, among others, aimed to strengthen human security, accelerate inclusive digital transformation in the region. These are key issues that are related to the development of, of our youth today. We recognize that the impact of pandemic can be multifaceted for the youth segment of affected population. In some countries where lockdown measures are introduced, the impact of social isolation may lead to beautiful. mental health concerns among us. Significant numbers of young workers have also been displaced, yes. while young entrepreneurs struggle to start and maintain their business venture. The Global Survey of Youth and COVID-19 by ILO found that more than 40% of the young people in the survey sample representing ASEAN, Asian countries, including ASEAN member states, were possibly affected by anxiety or depression. The effect of mental health was found to be strongest among young people whose education or work had been disrupted. In ASEAN alone, the education and training of over 150 million children and youth have been interrupted by widespread closure of schools and education institutions last year. Access to quality digital content and devices and devices to access of this content and academic material when school had to be closed is another challenge. This is particularly true for our students living in the rural area. Learning from the ex this experience of, it, of the pandemic, now is a good time to prepare students and youth for certain for uncertain future. We need to equip our youth with skills for the future work 
both 21st century skill and technical or digital skill. We need to ensure that our youth have the opportunity to participate and contribute to policy making and community development. These ties with the, with the roadmap of ASEAN Declaration of Human Resource Development for the Changing World of Work, which was launched by ASEAN Labor and Education Ministers last year. By guiding our regional cooperation towards developing adaptable and future ready human resources, this roadmap is another important initiative that will, that will help to build our youth resilient to the future disruption. ASEAN's dialogue and development partners has also supported quality higher education for students across ASEAN through the scholarship program. This scholarship has been a mainstay in ASEAN regional cooperation and wide range of scholarship offering available in the region from ASEAN, for ASEAN students to access, to access and pursue higher education. In addition, the ASEAN youth and education sector have developed their respective post-2020 sectoral work plans in consultation with a wide variety of global regional stakeholders that include students and youth leaders. These plans have a strong focus on inclusive and equitable quality education, youth engagement in policy discourse and lifelong learning to prepare for the future work. All these efforts demonstrate that human capital development is an issue of great importance for ASEAN, particularly as we prepare our youth for the impact of mega trend, the fourth industrial revolutions and other global shocks. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, ASEAN is a young and vibrant community and I always believe that investing in youth development means investing in our future. ASEAN economy is projected to grow to 4.5 trillion US dollar by 2030, making it the fourth largest economic bloc in the world. We currently have 223 million youth population aged 15 to 35 years old, who are the catalyst of our economic social and cultural development. It is forecasted that by 2038, the youth population ASEAN will be at its peak. With youth making up over 30% of regional population, ASEAN's member states are naturally focusing on youth leadership development young people of today will play a major role in shaping our regions for future generation as leaders and workforce and as innovators. I'm pleased that education, that education, people to people exchange in youth development continue to receive investments and creative initiative for multi, from multiple stakeholder. On that note, I commend Foreign Policy Community of Indonesia for organizing this lecture series that promotes intellectual exchanges between ASEAN youth and international scholars and policymakers. I'm also heartened to see the participation of many of our region's university in this initiative and students representative across the ASEAN countries. I'm confident that this lecture series can provide important knowledge and inspiration for all ASEAN youth to succeed in the ever-changing and post-pandemic world. With that, I wish the Southeast Asian Lecture Hall program a very success. I'd like to thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Secretary General, for sharing your remarks on how ASEAN is planning to further advance its young talents and also human capital in the future. Now we have the opportunity to have a fireside chat with Minister Nadim Makarim, who is the Minister for Education, Culture, Research, uh, and Technology of the Republic of Indonesia. Welcome, Minister Nadim. 
Thank you. Thank you for having me here, Esther. Thank you. So let me now ask you the first question. As you know, this Southeast Asia Lecture Hall program aims to have and promote uh, educational emancipation for Southeast Asian students. Also to allow universities, whether big or small, to have the opportunity to access high quality lectures from around the world. Uh, how important is that to Indonesia and to the region? Uh, so first of all, thank you for having me here. It's a great privilege and honor to be uh, speaking in this event. Um, to answer your question, I think it is exceedingly important uh, for Indonesia and, and Southeast Asia. Uh, I would say it's exceedingly important for, for all higher educational systems in the world now to kind of accept the changes that are coming and start to understand uh, that we have to, uh, whether we want it or not, no matter how uncomfortable it may be, we have to unbundle higher education. Uh, we have to democratize it and we have to emancipate it. I love that your question mentions the word emancipation. Um, uh, for, for those of you that, that I don't know if you've heard, but uh, the entire uh, educational uh, reform platform that we have in Indonesia today is called uh, Merdeka Belajar. The direct translation is um, emancipated learning, uh, emancipated learning. So it's very, uh, it's an apt question uh, because that is the entire philosophy of, of what we are trying uh, to do in the Indonesian education system. Um, absolutely, it's extremely critical that students can learn from any form uh, of content. Um, we've been actually moving a lot of our policies to um, quite, quite transformational policies in higher education, whereby um, for the first time in history, now any organization, well, any high quality organization, whether it's a company, uh, whether it's a research institute, uh, a nonprofit, uh, can effectively become a university uh, or a mini university that can uh, give full accreditation for a full immersive semester. Um, with one broad stroke, we allowed higher, uh, we allowed uh, students in higher education in Indonesia to take up to three semesters out of like for undergraduate, there would be eight semesters. So three of those eight semesters um, that they could take um, outside uh, of their major and two of those semesters outside uh, of campus. Um, they can do uh, entrepreneurship projects, they can do social projects, they can go uh, do certified uh, internships at, at, at companies or, or nonprofits. Uh, they can teach at a school, perform all kinds of social projects, they can do research. Um, and so we've really opened up the menu of what it means uh, uh, to have a higher education in Indonesia. And, and, and I think that, you know, what, what um, uh, the program that, that is happening now with, uh, uh, with the Southeast Asia Lecture Hall is, is very much in line with, with that concept of being able to learn from anyone, from anywhere, and digitizing those lectures are a fantastic way of, of actually increasing access. Um, we, we've made this concerted push um, also in universities to move towards project-based learning and towards uh, uh, building more critical thinking, learning processes. So we're very much against this whole concept of coming to university, uh, hearing someone lecture, uh, and then uh, getting a test at the end of the semester. Uh, we do not believe that, we believe this is an outdated mode of, of higher education. And so providing access to all these lectures available online and digitizing them, and then uh, taking that, that precious time in class for discussion, debate, and project-based teamwork, uh, we think is the direction to go uh, in higher education. So I've, I've been saying this for since I became minister, I'd like to see all universities in Indonesia post their um, lectures online so that students can consume it at their own leisure and then come to class ready to do some work, ready to do some group work, ready to do a case method discussion, ready to debate, ready to talk and participate. There's absolutely no need uh, to use that time to, to only listen. Um, you should use that time to discuss and interact and engage, uh, which, which is far more closer and to the, to the relevant skills that will be required once they step out of academia. So we're basically trying to challenge the ivory tower of academia to include a far bigger ecosystem because the combination between academics 
and 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 kind of uh, uh, real world experiences we believe to be to be the best uh, combination. Um, so so I think that you know I don't think this is a specific to Indonesia uh, uh, problem. Uh, I think that all of Southeast Asia can benefit from uh, some bold policies uh, in, in in moving uh, uh, the redefining uh, what higher education is. Um, we're not we're not just just uh, putting students into company. We're also putting professors and um, into companies, into research institutes. We want them to come out of campus as well, and we're trying to pull practitioners into campus as well. And I think this is relevant for the ASEAN context. We're actually hugely uh, putting resources into sending uh, kids uh, um, and students to do semesters abroad. So if it's only degree programs, you really uh, not really democratizing the people that can do full degree programs abroad. But if you do one semester programs abroad, if you unbundle those foreign exchanges, um, I think I think you can achieve a huge amount of synergy in the region uh, and a huge amount of collaboration. So we really look forward to our ASEAN partners actually opening uh, their institutions, their companies up for these one semester exchanges uh, in neighboring countries. And I think that can foster uh, uh, lots of interesting pathways uh, for how the region can grow together. Thank you, Minister. Uh, you touched briefly earlier about how you are transforming the higher education uh, system in Indonesia. Can you share how they can actually also play a key role to unlock the vast and I mean vast human capital across Southeast Asia. Yeah, uh, I I think I think most people know what are and could and will agree in what are the deficiencies of, of the current uh, education systems uh, around the world. Um, I, I don't think that's the problem. I think the problem is what it takes to change it requires a lot of courage. It requires a huge amount of courage because it, it, it means changing something that we've been comfortable in doing for the past, what, 50 to 100 years that has been largely unchanged um, while the world has, has dramatically uh, change. Uh, I think we need to question significantly uh, how high stakes testing can impact uh, 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 negatively uh, on, on, on how we manage our educational system. I think that needs to be challenged in, in a very big way. Um, I, think, I think we need to really reassess the value of project-based learning uh, versus just theory and testing. Um, uh, what is that and how do we make project-based learning and the act of making things, creating things uh, as groups uh, and, 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 and putting a greater emphasis on teamwork and collaboration, which will be the most important currency in the knowledge economy. Um, how do we do that? Then we have to think of, 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 of kind of the frontier policies of how to achieve that. I think we need to redefined uh, what what the concept of a teacher is um, and 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 how a teacher can uh, be a lot more uh, impactful in 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 part in getting the students to participate where they can use a variety of tools um, to actually including digital tools to to actually uh, derive participation and engagement from students I, I think that that there's a lot of things that um, uh, the education systems can support to unlock vast human capital but to do that you're going to have to make some drastic changes both in higher education and lower education to really focus on the foundational competencies that will actually be used in the in the workplace um, whether it's entrepreneurship whether it's uh, jobs um, so um, it's, it's 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 something that i think requires structural changes some of which may may be politically uh, difficult uh, to do so um, uh, when you have such entrenched systems uh, in place. So uh, I think that I think that Southeast Asia is in a very unique position whereby you know we we kind of get to choose where we want to jump, right? And and instead of just trying to um, um, kind of you know catch up uh, with with more developed countries. I think Southeast Asia has this uh, really important and I think limited time opportunity to kind of leapfrog to what the future educational system could be like, um, where the curriculum is far more flexible, 
where teachers are able to move up and down the curriculum as they see fit based on uh, the particular competencies of the child. Um, a much more open concept of, of majors uh, and a much more, I guess, similar to liberal arts, a much more um, passion first or interest first focus on more freedom for the students to decide what it is that they want to do. And of course, this opening up to actually off-campus activities and, 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 and working on that. These are all things that are not easy to do, but we have to try um, as, as government officials. And, and, and there's no other choice but to bring together all of the organizations outside of academia to kind of participate and provide those incentives and also lobby those organizations to understand that this, this is within their best interest as well. So that's going to be the link to total factor productivity in the economy. Without that, it's, it's very hard. Having said that, I think we all need to realize that there, there is no such thing as a, as a kind of low GDP um, uh, economy whereby um, suddenly the educational system is amazing. This doesn't happen. These two things are correlated uh, and, and, and causated, both, both of them. So your, your economic development as a country um, you know, caps the quality of education as well. So, it, you know, um, these two things have to go hand in hand. The other thing is, is that it's also, I think, naive to think that, that everyone who graduates from a university, there will be enough jobs uh, for them. So you have to create a system whereby self-employment and entrepreneurship is a critical uh, foundation of any higher education as well. Um, there simply aren't enough jobs to, to, to actually absorb all the top graduates of Southeast Asian universities. Uh, and and there, there, there won't be. The students have to be prepared to actually be self-employed, to do entrepreneurship, and to even create jobs. Uh, and I think that is, a, is also a huge challenge that where the shift needs to happen. Thank you, Minister Nadi, for that very insightful uh, remark. Uh, unfortunately, we're very constrained on time. So on this last question, I'd like to give you the opportunity to give message to our 11 student representatives joining us live right now from across Southeast Asia, uh, how they can prepare best uh, to embark upon this educational journey with Southeast Asia Lecture Hall. Well, I think, um, well, congratulations for, for being part of this program. Um, I guess my, my message to you is um, to, to take uh, as much risk as early in your life as possible. Um, uh, you know, follow the, learn from the experiences of your parents and a lot of the mentors out there, uh, but, but listen to your heart for career advice. Um, learn, learn from anyone and everyone um, that you can and, and be very um, daring in, in, in the ability to, to listen to people that you may not agree with initially. I think that's a very important factor in building critical thinking. Um, and, um, and yeah, and I, I guess uh, uh, don't, don't, you know, don't overvalue the noise around you and don't undervalue the, the kind of the voice inside your heart that usually tells you to go in the right direction uh, of, of where you want to go. I think that would be my message. Well, that wraps it up. Thank you again, uh, Minister, for your inspiring message. I'm sure that all of the students are the more encouraged uh, by it. Now, I'd like to give the spotlight to our student representatives. Uh, we have heard from Dr. Dino, from Mr. Secretary General, also from Minister Nadine. Um, so let me hear from the students that are joining us live now from University Brunei Darussalam, ala Fredawan. Thank you, uh, His Excellency Nadim Makarim, Minister of Education, Culture, Research and Technology of Republic of Indonesia, His Excellency Datu Lim Jokhoi, Secretary General of ASEAN, and Dr. Dino Pati Jalal, Founder and Chairman of Foreign Policy Community of Indonesia. Uh, and good afternoon to all rep uh, student representatives uh, across uh, the Southeast Asia region. So thank you for this opportunity opportunities and privilege for me to give uh, these remarks in this event. Uh, my name is Muhammad Alaf bin Haji Ridawan uh, from Brunei Darussalam, uh, the president of uh, University Brunei Darussalam Student Associations. Uh, I'm currently in my third year of doing Bachelor of, of, of Business, majoring in economics, 
uh, in, uh, in University Brunei Darussalam. First of all, I would like to give uh, my great gratitude to be part of uh, this ASEAN uh, Lectures Hall and connect with all the student representatives from various countries within the Southeast Asia. Alhamdulillah, we are very fortunate in Brunei for not having uh, any community spread of COVID-19 case for more than a year now. All credit uh, to His Majesty's government, frontliners and all the volunteers that helped to contribute towards these achievements. So currently in uh, University of Brunei Darussalam, UBD, blended learning is being held to adapt with the COVID-19 pandemic situations. Lectures are being held online where tutorials are physical. It gives the students the flexibility to have their lectures in the comfort of their own home and have the option to choose the tutorials day. Students have to enforce self-discipline, which I believe is a core value in life. Uh, not only it will help to ace academically, it will improve their life by not relying on motivation fully. Other than that, in our third year, we are given the opportunities to get out from our bubble through discovery year programs. During this, this uh, discovery year programs, students will be given the opportunities uh, to gain community-based or international experience outside of the UBD campus. With the COVID-19 pandemic, discovery are more focused in Brunei, giving the chance for students to know in depth regarding the government's agency and companies that are available via enriching internship. So I would like, uh, I would once again congratulate for this great program and chance to connect all students across Southeast Asia region and close the gap to access quality education through virtual learning. I hope that this program will increase awareness of our community in order to develop holistic and relevant ideas and solutions that will benefit uh, all uh, uh, nations in Southeast Asia region. We must strive for more collaborations and partnerships from all member states to promote teamwork and sustainable development in partnering for our goals. Thank you very much. That is all from me. Thank you, Allah, for sharing about your experience of studying in UBD and your enthusiasm for joining the Southeast Asia Lecture Hall. Next, I'd like to invite over Woodley X, who is a student at Carbon International University in Cambodia. Um, good afternoon. Um, thank you so much, um, His, Excellen His Excellency uh, Nardi Mak Makarim, who is the Minister of Education of uh, Indonesia. Um, His Excellency uh, Lin Jok Poi, who is the Secretary of uh, Secretary General of ASEAN, and also Dr. Dino for um, his uh, for their remarkable remarks. Um, uh, my name is uh, Bundi Ai. Currently, I'm a senior graduating in a major international relation and political science at Paragon International University, located in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. And uh, based on my perspective and uh, research, um, the current learning condition in Cambodia is uh, um, quite well in terms of uh, virtual learning. So uh, currently we are on a um, virtual learning platform, meaning that all students are required to uh, learn from home. And uh, this is a uh, yield both, uh, both a positive and a ne negative point. So for a positive point is that um, students can uh, can access to um, education platforms at home safely from the COVID-19 and they are able to keep up with their grades and all uh, and um, their lessons and ins instructions and all of that. And but for uh, the, the, the challenge of this, uh, like Dr. Uh, uh, Dino has mentioned, is the unequal access of education. So um, uh, students who are in the provincial area far fetched from uh, Phnom Penh has um, troubles with internet connection and also the access to um, education uh, virtually as well. So um, in, in, in spite of this COVID-19, we see uh, both uh, advantages and disadvantages from, uh, from, from this outcome. And um, lastly, I would like um, to thank um, Southeast um, Asia Lecture Hall for uh, this precious opportunity and um, this opportunity for me to uh, able to connect with um, other Southeast Asian students that has the same uh, the same and diverse uh, perspective uh, from my own. Um, I cannot wait uh, for more programs and um, to hear from my fellow Southeast Asian um, fellows in uh, this meeting. Thank you. Thanks, Lin Lee, for joining us from Phnom Penh. Uh, next, let's shift geographically a little bit. Uh, we can hear from our friend Catholic Rosemary from Universidad Indonesia. 
Good afternoon, His Excellency uh, Nandi Makarim, His Excellency Dato Lim Chokoy, and Dr. Dino Pati Jalal, and also my fellow student representatives. My name is Carlin Rosemary, a final year student in Universitas Indonesia, majoring in Communication Studies. As a student, I saw firsthand on the educational challenges we have to face, that of which is severe inequality in two areas. Firstly, the lack of resources, and second, the lack of information. COVID-19 has amplified this problem by tenfold. As we try to adapt with this new normal, we find ourselves increasingly reliant to technology. We experience a sudden shift to online learning as day-to-day -day interaction changes to grids of Zoom meetings. Hence, it is important that countries be more agile in facilitating the inevitable shift to digital in order to tackle the aforementioned inequality. Southeast Asia Lecture Hall is the ideal program to solve the resources and information disparity among Southeast Asian countries. Providing a series of classes prepared by world-class scholars, it will open access to quality education for all. On top of that, we can also gain valuable connections from students coming from other countries and therefore strengthening our bond as Southeast Asian countries. It is within my greatest honor to be able to represent Indonesia's participation in this prestigious lecture hall event. I sincerely hope that this program can strengthen the brotherhood in the region hand in hand providing resilience and education in the midst of this difficult time. Thank you. Thanks, Kathleen, for your support for this program. Uh, now I'd like to invite over Genevieve Yong, who is a student at National University of Singapore. Hi, good afternoon. His Excellency Nadim Karim, Minister of Education, Culture, Research and Technology of the Republic of Indonesia. His Excellency Dato Lim Jokhoi, Secretary General of ASEAN, Dr. Dino Pati Jalal, Founder and Chairman of the Foreign Policy Community of Indonesia, distinguished guests, my fellow Southeast Asian students, and ladies and gentlemen. My name is Genevieve Young, uh, and I'm currently in my final year of university, majoring in psychology. And I am really honored to be representing my university the National University of Singapore and my fellow Singaporean students to be here at the opening ceremony for the inaugural Southeast Asia Lecture Hall. So as the world is still finding its footing amidst the pandemic, I think that this program comes at an opportune time to discuss issues that are critical to our recovery and provide a platform for Southeast Asians to foster our relations at a, as a region. And I'm sure that we will benefit by emerging as a more global oriented and enlightened citizens. So we would like to appreciate the FPCI for this initiative and look forward to the exciting lineup over the next few months. Thank you very much. Thanks, Genevieve. Um, next, I'd like to invite over Liang, who is joining us from the Philippines. Uh, she's a student at Far Eastern University. Hello, good afternoon to everyone. Um, I apologize if there's a background noise due to an unprecedented heavy rainfall at the moment. So my name is Lian Janal Daoxi, an incoming third year student uh, under Bachelor of Arts in International Studies, majoring in International Relations and Diplomacy at Far Eastern University in Manila, Philippines. Um, first and foremost, I would like to quote our former National Economic and Development Authority Chief, Mr. Joey Salceda, with this public outcry last July 5, 2021, on reforming the ed education system in the Philippines. Our learners are stunted and undernourished. Our learning materials are substandard. Our curriculum is impractical. Our teachers are overworked and our schools are under-equipped. With the risk of climate change, floods, and intense storm surges have destroyed tens of hundreds of schools in the rural provinces. And this led to students in the mountain regions have to trek in order to go to school. Students in the lower socioeconomic classes have to juggle their academic responsibilities with part-time work and familial duties. Investments in social sciences and arts are still undermined and vocational courses are limited offers. The sudden shift to the online learning system only furthered the number of out-of-school youth in the Philippines. This is due to the lack of resources such as gadgets, conducive learning environment, and stable internet connection. These challenges would only result to long-lasting effects in literacy, innovation, and intergenerational poverty. Activities such as this forum are alternative avenues to supplement the learning divide during this pandemic. With that, I am honored to be here with you 
all, all of you today, um, my fellow Southeast Asian students, teachers, policists, and professionals, that with these challenges come opportunities. And with this, with these opportunities, we can achieve our global goal of edu quality education for all. Thank you and welcome everyone. Thanks, Leon, for sharing your perspectives from the Philippines. Um, now I'd like to shift to Nabila, who is a student for, uh, from International Islamic University in Malaysia. Hello, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Nabila Binti Abdul Hamid, a political science major from International Islamic University in Malaysia. So this unprecedented time has changed our education landscape, which has resulted in school closures and many institutions, schools, universities, colleges are now resulting to um, virtual learning. But studying virtually comes with a lot of challenges, especially if you're coming from an underprivileged background. And quoting from my technology policy lecturer, Dr. Zainal, if he's seeing right now, um, he emphasized that technology should acquire four vital elements, the four A's, affordability, accessibility, appropriateness, and availability. So if we fail to fulfill these four criteria, it would create a technology gap that will divide the country between urban and rural, privileged and underprivileged kids because by chasing new laptops um, and internet subscription in order to cater for uh, virtual learning is undeniably burdensome as I have seen some of my friends had to drop out had to take a study leave and this shows um, the glaring scale of social segregation and massive economic disparity uh, between the rich and the poor um, and this pandemic actually exposes the existing frailty and flaws of the education systems across the world and in Malaysia specifically. And I think um, the policymakers should seize this opportunity to reform the system. And um, I believe the entire point of this program is to provide a platform to exchange ideas, share our experiences and build new connections with other Southeast Asian students for the betterment of this, of this region. And I would like to thank FBCI for organizing this program. Truly humbled by this opportunity and very much looking forward to this event. Thank you. Thanks, Nabila, for sharing your experiences over in Malaysia. Uh, we'll now be hearing from Nafai, who is a student at Diplomatic Academy of Vietnam. Good afternoon, distinguished guests, lecturers, and fellow students. My name is Nga Phan. I am a senior student majoring in international relations and diplomatic at Diplomatic Academy of Vietnam. And I'm extremely honored to join the Southeast Asia Lecture Hall today and provide an overview about Vietnamese higher education. So after years of striving, we have basically and comprehensively renovated higher education towards standardization, modernization, and international integration. And university students are better trained with professional skills and uh, foreign language proficiency, making them regionally and internationally competitive. However, their, our country's tertiary education still has some weaknesses. First, there remains a gap between students in big cities and those in small provinces in access to good facility and lectures. Another issue centers on the quality of standards, especially in research. So as a representative from Vietnam, I hereby wish to reiterate our sincere gratitude to the foreign policy community of Indonesia for the meaningful initiative. It comes at a pivotal moment, not only in our country, but also across the region. To get access to lectures by prominent scholars to connect with fellow students from Southeast Asia will definitely help us to enrich our perspectives and partially overcome the current limitations. So thank you. And I hope that we will all enjoy and maximize the experience at the Southeast Asia Lecture Hall in the next two months. Thank you, Nafan, for being here with us. Um, next, we'll be inviting our student who is joining from Savanake University in Mars, Sukhsakon. The mic is yours. Hello. 
Um, thank you for having me. Uh, first of all, ladies and gentlemen, I'm currently studying economic for rural development and business attention at Savannah Head University. I'm a second year student. As we know, the impact of COVID-19 has divided many sectors and education is one of them. However, at the patient, we have come back to study face to face in the classroom, but everything still does not look normal. For me, I feel that the environment in the class changes. For example, the sister and the most of students are wearing masks during uh, the class and maybe some of us are still worried to each other. On behalf of Sonic Head University, I would like to appreciate uh, foreign policy community of Indonesia for organizing the Southeast Asia Lecture Hall and for having us the great opportunity to join this event. Uh, we are looking forward to participate in the first lecture soon. Thank you. Thanks, Uksakwan. Uh, next, I'd like to invite over Sarah Tan, who is joining from Tamasa University in Thailand. Good afternoon, distinguished speakers, my fellow students' representative. I'm Tara Tan from Thailand and I'm a senior at political science faculty, Thammasat University. I'm really excited to participate in today's Southeast Asia Lecture Hall, and I'm really looking forward to the change this program will make to the Southeast Asian academic world. Now, the current learning condition in Thailand is majorly affected by the pandemic situation, obviously. But apart from that, I want to point out three major educational challenges we also face right now. Firstly, the deep-rooted seniority culture in lower education in Thailand, which produces students who are less vocal, lack critical thinking skills, and are obediently conformed to the system. Secondly, there is also insufficient support for non-mainstream vocational courses in higher education, generating opportunity costs for new talents in our country. And last but not least is this structural problem of the system concerning the quality of the teachers. When teachers neglect to properly cultivate students' knowledge, they then make academic courses in school impractical. Students then would find themselves in expensive tutoring institutions, making the educational inequality gap widen. Now, speaking of inequality access to education, the Southeast Asia Lecture Hall I believe is a great platform for students across ASEAN to have the access to quality lectures from around the world. So today's online conference is a great opportunity for me as an international relations student to share and expand my perspective with fellow youth across Southeast Asia. And thank you very much for having me. Thanks a lot as well, Garaban. Um, next, we have our student who's joining from University of Mandalay in Myanmar, Santan. Good afternoon, um, His Excellency Nadia Malcolm, His Excellency Desalin Jokun, Dr. Tino Patitola, and the respective guests. My name is Santan Tan. I am a political science student studying at Mandalay University. I'm so grateful and honored to be here as a representative of Myanmar. I truly believe that education and sharing knowledge in other world's discussions are the only thing that can connect people deeply from one place to another. And it is the right and the easiest way to learn about one's values, norms, culture, good manners, and even bad experiences. Communication and understanding each other will give us empathy and bring us closer as one, which we are said to be a strong ASEAN in the future. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we have now fewer options to choose how to communicate and share experiences. Of course, for Myanmar, the political instability due to the military taking power has increased the chances for young people not to have any access to education, even from the local educators, let alone the world-class lecturers. During the dark times, I hoped the ASEAN community and the people of ASEAN will help each other, consider each other, and hold together to survive through the difficulties. Last but not least, I hope this lecture hall 
will be an example of what we can achieve as one, as the people of ASEAN. The lectures from other parts of the world, as well as discussions from different parts of the region will definitely, in my personal view, bring answers to the question that the policy makers cannot answer, because after all, the ASEAN is about the people, and the answer lies within us, and not on the fancy project papers. Please let me conclude with my grateful feelings. I'm very lucky and honored to have the chance to attend the SEA Lecture Court. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ban Ban, for joining us and for your words as well. Last but not least, we'll now be hearing from Epi, uh, who is a student at the Institute of Business in Timor Leste. Epi, you may now thank you very much. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. Uh, His Excellency Mr. Nadim Karim, the Minister of Education uh, of the Republic of Indonesia. His Excellency Dato Lim Zakoi, the Secretary General of the ASEAN. His Excellency Dato Dino Pati De Jala, the Founder and Chairman of the Foreign Policy Community of in Indonesia, distinguished fellow uh, students Southeast Asian country. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm represent, uh, I am represent, representative from the IOB and, uh, and the Timor Leste. My name is Epi Orleans, majoring in the uh, management. As we all are aware that COVID-19 has changed the life of style of people around the, uh, around the world since uh, 2020, where we, where we all have to follow the, uh, the, the WHO protocols to keep the social distance in, the, in order to protect ourselves from the virus. This situation has directly affected the education system, particularly in the, in the Timor-Leste, where the basic infrastructure for the infrastructure is still lacking, especially in the rural area and then, and then the, the telecommunications area. So when, when, the, when the, 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 the government start to introduce the online school, not all students have the same condition to study as well as to access to the internet. However, we still trying that we still trying to keep the learning as much as we can. As a, as a student from the Institute of Business and and as a Timorese, it is a privilege and honor to attending and participate in the Southeast Asian lecture hall. This is a chance to allow students to learn and sharing their knowledge among the students. Our deepest and sincerely gratitude for the FPCI and then uh, to, uh, for allowing us the opportunity to listen and learn from the world-class speaker with the deep knowledge and expertise and in their, their area. People that we can only see on television or in media. We hope that this online learning can promote a closer linking within the students and bring more fresh idea and find some good strategic model to fill the gaps in the, our society as, as well as to find a better education program to promote the equality of the education to, to all the citizens without leaving no one behind. Before I conclude, I would like to welcome and encourage all students to participate effectively in, in this online lecture and start thinking about how or what we can contribute to fill the gaps in the, our society for the better life for the all people. Thank you for having me today. Thanks as well, Epi. What an amazing thing it is to be able to hear directly from the young voices across the region about their personal experiences, overcoming challenges that COVID-19 has posed upon their learning and how they navigate the virtual learning processes and convert that into an opportunity uh, to further study and gain knowledge. Uh, we are now nearing the end of the opening ceremony. Uh, so I'd like to take this opportunity and chance to thank uh, Mr. Secretary General Dapolim Jokhoi, Minister Nadi Makarim, the Minister of Education for Indonesia, and Dr. Dino Spatizela for being here with us and for all of your insightful remarks. I'd like to thank as well our 11 student representatives for being here and sharing with us your stories, hopes, aspirations, and goals for the Southeast Asia Lecture Hall program. Before we officially close the ceremony on behalf of the organizing committee, uh, I'd like to say a huge thank you again to our university partners, Venus University, Chiang Mai University, Diplomatic Academy of Vietnam, Far Eastern University, East Timor Institute of Business, International Islamic University, Malaysia, LSDR, Communication and Business Institute, Mahido University, National University, Philippines, National University of Singapore, Paragon International University, President University, Sabanaka University, Singapore University of Social Sciences, 
Tamasat University, Faculty of Political Science, Universitas Erwanga, Universitas Bosowa, Universitas Budi Luhur, Universitas Gajah Mada, Universitas Hasanuddin, Universitas Jenderal Ahmad Yani, University Kebangsaan Malaysia, Universitas Kristen Satyawacana, University of Mandalay, Universitas Andalas, Universitas Samatriadi, University of Nottingham Malaysia, Universitas Samratulangi, Universitas 17 Agustus 1945 Jakarta, Vietnam Academy of Social Sciences, Yale and US College, and Yangon University of Economics. Thank you again uh, to the organizing committee for this opening ceremony. And for all of you students who are tuning in, we invite you to register to our first lecture on international relations with Professor Amitabh Akari of American University. The first lecture will be taking place on Wednesday, August 11 at 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Jakarta time. To register, you can simply go to sealecturehall.com. That's sealecturehall.com. And we look forward to seeing all of you at our first installment of Southeast Asia Lecture Hall. Thank you, everybody, and I wish you a good day. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Uh, Pak Sajjan. Thank you, thank you. Thank, thank you, know. you so much and stay safe. I, I'll come see you soon, yeah? Yeah, we come in, in touch. Yes, okay. thank you. Nice to hear the young people talking about their views. Yes, they're all very smart. Smarter yeah. than me, all of them. Of course, of course. They're all very smart people and they're better than us. Okay, yeah. okay. thank you. Thank you.